leader of the rebel Papuan Republican Fighters Army, Mr Simon Kaumi, says he's prepared to go to jail for the cause of Papuan separatism. An exclusive film report on his army in this bulletin. Good morning, James Dibble in Sydney. Welcome to the ABC News in Colour. In the news this morning, a big smash in London's underground train system. Cambodian rebel forces step up rocket attacks on Phnom Penh's airport. France to maintain a total news blackout on its underground nuclear tests in the South Pacific. And President Ford extends the amnesty for Vietnam War draft dodges. Here are the weather forecasts for the rest of the day. For New South Wales, showers about the coast and adjacent ranges easing in the south. Local thunderstorms over the eastern regions, mostly dry west of the ranges. And for Sydney, chance of thunderstorms. Showers becoming isolated in the afternoon with sunny breaks. The Army Task Force, which has been cleaning up the damage caused by Cyclone Tracy in Darwin, will be relieved next week. The task force has been conducting clean-up operations seven days a week since taking over from the Navy on January the 20th. The relief force will still find plenty of work in Darwin's devastated suburbs. Thousands of damaged houses have yet to be cleared. To find out how Darwin is recovering from Cyclone Tracy, we sent Jim Revett there this week. Here's his report. Weeks since Cyclone Tracy struck Darwin, and since then the city has made a remarkable recovery. The population has reached 23,000, 3,000 more than the authorities expected at this time, and has resulted in tighter controls being put on the issuing of entry permits. In the business centre, the business as usual signs are going up fast. Before the cyclone, about 1,200 people own their own businesses in Darwin, and about 900 have indicated they want to open up again. However, a shortage of labour and materials is hindering commercial rehabilitation. The government has set up a business relief loan fund to industry and small enterprises with maximum loans of $25,000. And there's an air of optimism among businessmen, according to a member of the Territory's Legislative Assembly, Mr Nick Dondas. How is the business community taking it all? Very despondent, the first couple of days after the cyclone, but now they're all very eager to open their shops there, borrowing kind of material, getting stock from different parts to equip their shops and they're all very very eager to get back into business once again and they're all doing very well those that are back in business. The reconstruction of damaged homes is being given top priority but many people have turned to alternative temporary accommodation. Caravans are selling well and the Australian government is planning to send more than 1,000 of them to Darwin to help alleviate the critical accommodation situation. The government is determined the new homes built in Darwin will be better able to cope with cyclones. To this end, the Department of Housing in Darwin has designed houses which it believes would withstand abnormally high winds. But these designs won't necessarily set the pattern of future building. Private Enterprise has been invited to submit designs for 2,500 houses, each containing a cyclone shelter. The first of the new homes should be under construction in two months. At an estimated $32,000 a house, the cost of this project will be more than $80 million. However, it will be a long time before there's a new house on this block, one of the 2,000 cleaned up by the Army Task Force in the past few weeks. The owner paid $35,000 for the house last year, and it wasn't insured when Tracy struck. The federal government chartered the liner Patrice at $15,000 a day to provide air-conditioned accommodation for more than 1,000 people. The army put a Bailey bridge across the gap torn in the ore-loading wharf and the Patrice sailed in. But it arrived without enough catering staff and fewer than 300 Darwin people have taken up berths. So far, the reconstruction planners have not finalised details of the future of the Aborigines in Darwin. Their main reserve at Bagot was largely destroyed and most of the inhabitants left town. Some still in Darwin are working in clean-up teams and they're wondering just what level of priority Aborigines will get in the new Darwin. Among most administrators, there's no enthusiasm for re-establishing the Bagot reserve in its old role. As part of the clean-up campaign, several hundred wrecked and abandoned cars have been cleared from the streets. 
Many of the owners have yet to be traced. It's estimated that as many as 10,000 vehicles were damaged in the cyclone, and insurance assessors are coping by publishing daily appointment times for each vehicle owner with a claim. They're trying hard to get people to accept cash settlements instead of waiting for the overworked repair shops to do the job. To end, we repeat that in London, rescue workers are trying to free eight people still trapped in the wreckage of the city's worst ever underground train smash. More news this afternoon about 20 minutes past one in our main bulletin tonight, as usual, at seven o'clock.